All right, I want to see your work, please. So we start by asking ourselves, is a first law problem or a second law problem? That's based on whether it's accelerating or not. The, is the sign accelerating? That makes it a first law problem. So immediately we know net force has to be equal to zero. Start from here. Then any object that has mass is given its own diagram. How many objects do we have here? Just one. It's the sign. I asked for you to analyze the sign. So the sign gets a dot indicating its mass. We're going to remove the extension from the object and we focus on just this as the mass of the object. Later on we'll worry about its shape and deal with how we deal with the shape, but right now we don't deal with the shape, just the center of mass of the object. We draw a series of arrows, each one indicating forces acting on the object. We have three categories of those forces, starting with conservative forces. Are there any conservative forces acting on the object? The answer to this one should be easy and should be the first thing you say. Every single object is going to have a conservative force acting on it. It's always going to be gravity. It always should be the first thing you draw. That's going to be a single arrow downwards indicating the weight of the object. Force of gravity is weight and it's equal to mg, all things we talked about last week. Once you've dealt with the conservative forces, we begin talking about the contact forces. We start by saying, is there any surface in contact with the object? Is it resting on a surface of some sort? No, so there's no normal force acting on the object. Is there any cable, rope, or cord connected to the object? If there is, then you draw an arrow indicating the force from each of the cables. These are tension forces. I believe you should have drawn two tension forces, one this way, which I will call T1. They need a name. And one this way. Now you, with your measuring device, could have ensured that it comes out to be 40 degrees. Either way, there should be some attempt at balance. Things pulling to the right, things pulling to the left. We said that it should be balanced. Things pulling up, things pulling down. You should work to try and make sure it's balanced. The amount of upward force should look the same up and down. The amount of force left and right should be balanced. It's kind of why I'm drawing this one a little bit longer, to make sure the part that goes up matches the part of this that's going down. And the part that's going to the left matches the part that's going to the right. Then label it. And you need to now consider if there's any other forces acting in the system. We move on to resistive forces. Is the object trying to slide past some surface? No, so I don't think we have to include friction as one of the forces here. So I think this is all you had to draw. Now, we're gonna continue. I wanna make sure we make it through all of these. So your next job is to assign a coordinate system. Now, on Friday when we talked about this, I said the coordinate systems, when you apply them, have two priorities, two things you should be thinking about when you're trying to add a, a coordinate system. The first priority is if it's accelerating, you make one of the positive directions the direction of the acceleration. Is our object accelerating? No, so we don't have to use that priority. The next priority is to choose a coordinate system that is aligned with as many forces as possible. It's pretty clear to me that these two forces are at a right angle to each other. So if I line up my coordinate system, I'm gonna line it up in such a way to be aligned with those. So I'm gonna choose a coordinate system that matches up with those two forces. I'll make this the positive x direction, and this the positive y direction, this is the negative y direction, and this is the negative x direction. So we have chosen the coordinate system that is aligned with as many forces as possible. This one is aligned with two of the three forces. Now, this is a departure from this point because we didn't go into this portion on Friday. We're gonna go into this portion today. We are gonna be resolving vectors, and the resolution of vectors means that you have to be careful about how you deal with where the angles go. We are told the angle of 40 degrees was here. You need to figure out where to put that in your diagram relative to your coordinate system. And in this case, that 40 degrees would be here. And the way I know that is because if I put a horizontal line here, these two angles are alternate interior angles and they have to be equal. 
These are the kinds of geometry rules you're probably going to use here. Corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, vertical angles, they're going to show up in this kind of stuff. So be mindful of those things. We have to break this up into components and we have to use the angle that we're given. We can't use this angle. If you're given the 40 degrees, you have to use it. Mostly because in the future, you won't be given 40 degrees, you'll be given theta. And that has to be a part of your answer. So get used to using the angle that's been given to you in each circumstance. Um, for this one, you have to draw your components. I'm gonna draw a component this way and label this T in the X direction. I'm gonna draw this one and label it T in the Y direction. Now, we have to resolve these. Last Friday, I left this part out. Today, I'm not leaving it out. This is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side. T2 is the hypotenuse. So, and I'm only gonna do this one time. After this, I think you guys need to be able to do this on your own. Sine of 40 is opposite over hypotenuse is adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm just trying to be thorough, but this suggests that Ty is T2 sine 40. And this also suggests that Tx is T2 cosine 40. We're gonna have to be able to do the trig. Any question about where any of that came from? Now, at this point, we have done our first, second choice. We've done the free body diagram. We've applied a coordinate system, and we've resolved our forces. The last thing to do is to apply Newton's law. We're going to have the net force in the x direction. That has to equal 0. And net force in the y direction, which also has to equal 0. Once we said it was a first law problem, both directions equal 0. Based on my diagram, there are two forces in the x direction. There's T1, which points to the right and is positive. And then there's Tx, which is T2 cosine theta, sorry, cosine 40. And it points to the left, so it's negative. And they have to sum to be equal to zero. Remember what this is. This is not an equation. It's a set of instructions. It says add up all of the forces, taking into account their direction, and set them equal to zero. That's all we've done. We're gonna do the same thing in the y direction. I have Ty pointing up, that's T2 sine 40. And I have Mg pointing down, so Mg equals zero. Now, I'll say it again, Newton's laws generate relationships that you may or may not be able to use to solve your problem. When you reach the end of doing this set of steps, you should have a couple of relationships. If you look at everything that's here, let's see, this was step one, choosing whether it's a first or second law problem. Then step two is drawing the free body diagram. Parts A, B, and C, we're asking about conservative forces, contact forces, and resistive forces. Coordinate system, step three. Resolving vectors, step four. Applying Newton's laws, step five. If your notes weren't helpful just a minute ago to do this, make your notes helpful right now. So that when I give you the next situation, you can use your notes. Only about half of you had the right diagram. All right? This is example number four. All right? I want to do example number five. Are you guys ready? You're not. We're going to move on to example number five. Example number five is a wagon
child's wagon is being pulled on by a child. The wagon has mass M. It's being pulled on with a force of F A at an angle of theta. The wagon moves this way with a constant velocity. Please apply the force concept model to come up with a relationship for this system. Um, think book sliding up the wall. That would be the better example to look at from last week. So let's start with our free body diagram. Ask yourself these five questions or go through these five steps and see if you can't get as far as possible into resolving this one. I'm giving you an applied force so we know that we dealt with that on Friday. This is the same kind of thing. Okay, folks, I've walked around the room a couple times and there are a little bit of struggles here. So uh, I wanna just, I'm gonna say things out loud. I'm not gonna draw anything. I'm just gonna say things out loud. I am asking questions. I'm not really looking for you to give me an answer, right? I want you to look at the situation, look at your diagram and just see if you've asked yourself the same questions. Does everybody understand? So you can talk amongst yourselves, sure, but I'm not looking for a classroom answer. Is it a first law problem or a second law problem? Did you make that decision first? Then you should have written something down to tell yourself whether it's gonna be a first law problem or a second law problem. Next, free body diagram. You're gonna take your object. Do you know what your object is? Once you've decided what the object is, you reduce it to a point. You're gonna draw some arrows for the next few moments. And I wanna be really careful here. I suggested that you have multiple colors of pens and stuff. Don't get your arrows that you wrote for your uh, coordinate system confused with the arrows that are using for force. I'm careful to make sure I draw everything a different color so that you guys can see the difference. Your free body diagram are forces. The, the coordinate system is extra. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna ask myself questions about the wagon. First I'm gonna say, is there a conservative force acting on the wagon? I think there is, I need to draw an arrow to indicate the conservative force acting on the wagon. There is a force expressly given to me, one I was told I would have to use. I'm gonna to have to draw that in. All right, that's that applied force. It doesn't fit a category. It's a force that is given to you that you must use in the problem. So I would probably have drawn something for FA. Then I would ask myself about the contact forces. Is the object in contact with a surface? If it is, then it has to have a force applied to it that is normal to the surface, perpendicular to the surface. And then I'd ask, are there any cables or ropes attached? If I already put FA in there, then I'm not gonna draw it a second time. Besides that, there's no other ropes or cables attached. And then I would ask myself, is there a resistive force acting on the object? If there is, I'd have to draw in something for friction or something for air resistance, if air resistance was given. So now that I've made an exhaustive list, look at your picture there should be four arrows there. Of the things you had to draw, there were four things that this one qualifies for. Did you indicate in your diagram that there was a force of gravity acting on the object? Then you should have a downward arrow to indicate the force of gravity. Did you label it with weight or mg? You should have. There was a force given to you that you had to use. Did you draw something indicating there is applied force acting on the object? I believe that's a good choice. The object is in contact with a surface. There had to be an upward force acting on the object. It has to be a normal force. It's in contact with the ground, so there must be a normal force acting on the object. Yes, I know, many of you forgot this, but this one is still there, it's touching the ground. The moment it's touching the ground, it's experiencing a normal force. This looks unbalanced to me, yet I'm pretty sure most of you assumed it was a first law problem because it says it's traveling at constant velocity. That makes it a first law. That highly suggests there's a resistive force acting on the object, and that resistive force is likely going to be friction. Four forces acting on the object. The only way this force would have disappeared 
is if whoever's pulling on the wagon pulls hard enough to lift it off the ground, which they could do, but they'd have, it wouldn't be on the ground anymore. You following me? So if it's touching the ground, there's a normal force acting on it. I need a coordinate system that I think would work best for this problem. It's moving at constant velocity, so I don't have to worry about the acceleration. I'm probably gonna use a coordinate system that's lined up with the three forces here. All right, three of these forces are all at right angles to each other. Friction has to be perpendicular to the normal force. So that leaves just one force that has to be resolved, the applied force. So I'm thinking I draw a force in the x direction and a force in the y direction. This has to be theta. Did you go far enough to do these things? I'm expecting this tomorrow. And then I would hope you can do this. Can you go that far? I want you to be able to go this far and take your force and resolve it into components. Even if there's no real angle given, just a placeholder. So that's step one through four. Step five, apply Newton's first law in both directions. So net force in the x direction has to be zero. There are two forces in the x direction. The component of the applied force, that's Fa cosine theta and friction, they are in the x direction. There are three forces in the y direction. There's the component of the applied force pointing upwards. There's the normal force pointing upwards. And there's weight pointing downwards. Example five. All right, I'm gonna take it easy on you with example six, but I'm actively trying to trick you with example six. I wanna to talk to you about this problem as a, an elevator problem. So I have an elevator. Inside the elevator is a person. Elevator's got a cable attached to it. The elevator is moving upwards at a constant velocity. The person has a mass of 60 kilograms. I would like you to analyze the person. Can you draw me a free body diagram? do a Newton's law analysis on the person as they travel in the elevator. As many people as I thought, that's good. Um, is this a first law problem or a second law problem? First law. First law. Excellent. Um, all of you who just put the, uh, put the weight down, excellent work. The person has weight. So good job. Um, is the person in contact with the surface? Yeah, they are. Upward force, uh, normal force, so normal and weight. There's no tension here. Is the cable attached to the person? No, the cable's attached to the elevator. The person experiences a normal force. So anybody put tension? No, that's acting on the elevator. Everybody understand? So do me a favor, draw me a free body diagram for the elevator now. Be careful, actively trying to trick you. All right, it's early release today, so I have limited amount of time. So this is the person. How you do the elevator depends on what you were thinking. So let's consider the elevator for a minute. How many of you have a downwards arrow? Good, good, good. 
we go. The elevator is experiencing weight. It has mass. It's a big box. How many of you drew an upward force for tension? Anybody have another force besides that? Okay, there should be another one. What's your force, the third one? A normal force going down, excellent. The elevator's in contact with the surface, the person. The person pushes downwards on the elevator. Yep. All right, the tension is gonna be greater than just the force required to hold the elevator. The tension has to hold the elevator and the person. The person interacts with the elevator through this normal force. So from the standpoint of the elevator, it's experiencing two downwards forces, its own weight, and the fact that a person is standing inside. That's a normal force from the person. And there's one force upwards. The net force here is zero. We only have three minutes left. It's worth it for one more. You did this kind of on Friday, but I wanna try it again. A person is pushing a box up a ramp. The box is moving up the ramp at a constant velocity. I'm interested in the box, not the person. Yes. 